Welcome, Connie. Welcome, everyone. We're going to get started in about six minutes. And just so you're aware, this meeting is being recorded and everyone is on mute and will be muted throughout the entire event. We will, however, be participating in the chat feature, which you're welcome to practice now if you like. It's at the bottom of the screen and there will be a Q&A at, at the end of the presentation. Just scrolling through and seeing all of your faces out there. It's so great to see so many familiar and unfamiliar faces. Welcome. Please feel free to turn on your video. It would be nice to see everybody's face if we can. If not, I understand you're in your pajamas. You've got popcorn. I get it. That's welcome too. <laughs> you can turn on your video for that as well. Again, for the new folks, we're going to let a few more people join and we'll get started at 1130. Thanks for being here. I should have figured out how to put some music in the waiting room here. <laughs> it's our first virtual event, so we're still learning how to do some of these things. Thank you all. We'll get started in just a minute.
Okay, so it's 1130. I'm going to go ahead and kick us off. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the first virtual event of the Amelia Forever campaign. My name is Genevieve Fletcher. I am the development officer for North Florida Land Trust and one of our staff representatives to the Amelia Forever campaign committee, who you will be introduced to here in a few minutes. Before we get started, I want to go over how we will be using the Zoom platform today. First of all, everyone on this call is muted and will be muted throughout the duration of the event. We will be using the chat feature of Zoom for Q&A at the end of the presentation, which you will get to practice together in just a few minutes. And I can see many of you are already practicing it now. Also, for your information, this Zoom presentation is being recorded so that we can share it with the community afterward. If for some reason something happens during this event, like the power goes out, as I know it happened yesterday for many of you in Fernandina Beach and last night, uh, and you lose connection, we will send all the registrants a link to the recording so you can view it at your convenience. If you're joining us by calling in, please know that you are going to get the most out of this event on a desktop or laptop computer. The presentation is visually heavy with a video component, so if you can, please join us that way. Otherwise, you can still listen in, and again, we will send the link to the recording later. All right, uh, next slide, please, Stan. Okay. Um, if you're joining us by computer or smartphone, we would love to see your face today. Even though you are muted, there is something to seeing each other's faces and expressions that makes us feel like we're all together, which is something rare these days. Already seeing your faces has made me smile. So uh, if you can, please turn on your video if you'd like. Um, you can see where to do this on the screen. I've, I've pointed to it. Uh, and there's a stop start video button in the taskbar at the bottom of your Zoom screen. Uh, if you're joining us on a smartphone, you may have to tap the screen, but, it, but the, the video icon should be in the same place in the taskbar at the bottom left. Next slide, please, Stan. At the top right of your screen, you should see a small set of squares, like a Rubik's cube or some other combination of squares and rectangles in the corner. It also might say view. Um, click on this icon and you'll be given several different viewing options. I suggest that you practice playing with these options to see which one you prefer. Gallery view allows you to see more people and you can scroll through faces to see everyone, which is what I have it on now. You can kind of scroll at the bottom and I get to see all of your wonderful faces. However, speaker view may be most appropriate for the video and slideshow so that you can see most of the screen without obstruction. On your smartphone, you sim simply slide to the left or right to change the speaker view so those on your phones can practice that. Next slide, please. Okay, finally, <laughs> I promise, we will be interacting using the chat feature, as I mentioned. And that is also located in the taskbar. I've pointed to it on the screen. Uh, if you're joining us on your smartphone, you'll see three dots in the taskbar. Click this icon and you will find the chat feature in the menu that pops up there. So with that, if you have any questions, Megan or Stan can help answer that in the chat. Um, but I hope that was helpful. So let's go ahead and practice. Next slide, there you go. So to practice, we have a prompt for you, and we would love to hear from you what you love about Amelia Island in the chat box. Maybe you've lived here your whole life or were born here. Maybe you've vacationed here before or live here seasonally, or perhaps you live in Jacksonville like I do, and just take pride in this regional treasure. Let us know what you love about this special place. The friendly people, I agree, Jennifer. Trinidad, the history, absolutely. And we're gonna hear a little bit about that today from Pastor Carlton Jones, particularly American Beach, which I'm really excited about. 
The big trees, Genevieve says. Another Genevieve. Hi, Genevieve. <laughs> Paradise. Hi, Ron and Janet. <laughs> so glad you could join us. <laughs> What's left of the natural environment? Definitely, and that is what we are here to talk about preserving today. The ocean, the wildlife, the quaintness. Absolutely. Amelia Island is a treasure. The trees are wonderful. Beach, shark's teeth. Hmm. I'm not very good at finding shark's, shark's teeth, so I admire that. Salt marshes, the ocean waves. Hmm. Definitely. Beautiful beaches. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for participating in that. That's such wonderful tributes. Uh, you're welcome to keep them coming, but we are going to move on to the main program now. You may enter questions in the chat at any time throughout the event. However, we will wait until the Q&A portion at the end to answer your questions as best we can. So without further ado, I will introduce Pam Hart. She is the chair of the Amelia Forever Campaign Committee, who will lead us into the substantive portion of our virtual event today. Pam has been an excellent leader and advocate for the Amelia Forever mission and absolutely wonderful to work with. Pam, take it away. Can you hear me? Okay, great. Welcome to the Amelia Forever webinar. We're so glad you joined us today. I think you will really enjoy it. We've got some incredible footage of the natural places on the island. We've also got some beautiful photography of the vistas and the wildlife. So stay tuned because some of that's in the PowerPoint as well as embedded in the video. Um, just to summarize, you know, I've always loved Amelia Island. And the thing I love most about it is all the natural places and the wildlife habitat and the fact that it's not overdeveloped. But unfortunately, we are under a lot of development pressure and we are quickly losing those wild spaces and the wildlife habitat on the island. Well, the good news is the Amelia Forever campaign is trying to do something about that. Simply put, we are raising money to buy land on Amelia Island to put it in a permanent conservation land trust through the North Florida Land Trust and many of you may have heard of them. North Florida Land Trust was formed over 20 years ago and they've saved over 25,000 acres of land in North Florida already. They are one of the premier land trusts in the state and we are so lucky to be working with them because of their expertise. Um, and one thing I wanna say just in general, you know, what we're doing on this campaign it matters to us now. It matters to our quality of life. It matters to the, to the wildlife on the island. It matters as far as keeping us from having to fight more congestion and more traffic. And beyond that, it will matter to our children and our children's children. I cannot emphasize how important this campaign is. On this campaign, I have had a wonderful committee working with me. We were unable to hold our normal events due to COVID and yet we've raised over $625,000 already. So quickly, let me give them a shout out and introduce them to you. I have Jane Everts, Tommy Grimes, Jean Drapeau, Corky Hoffman, Pastor Carlton Jones, Cynthia Jones Jackson, Jennifer Lassier, Connie McDaniel, Ken McDaniel, Sally Perez, Jeannie Rostad, and Lily Sheets. And they just been incredible. And I would also like to introduce you to the North Florida Land Trust staff that has been working with us on this, and they've been awesome. We've got Jim McCarthy, the president, Rebecca Perry, she's the director of real estate and community conservation. We've got Mark Hudson. He's the Director of Strategic Conservation. We've got Megan Medjurashino, and she's the Director of Development and Marketing. I actually didn't slaughter her name. Sometimes I do her last name. 
<laughs> We've got Genevieve Fletcher, a development officer, and Allison Cologne, the creative manager. And then we have a few special presenters today. Um, we'll have Pastor Carlton Jones, Mark Hudson, Rebecca Perry, Megan Maggiorashino, and Genevieve Fletcher. And quickly before we start the video, I'd like to just give a special thanks to Stan Cottle with CECOM. Stan did this fabulous footage that you're gonna see and produced the video for us. And then Steve Leinberg did the photography. Many of you may have seen his work in some of the hardback books on the island and he volunteered his time. So we really appreciate that. Without further ado, let's get the video rolling. Amelia Island is a stunning seaside community that invokes pride in residents and visitors alike for its unique combination of natural and historic features. Boasting an incredible tree canopy, proximity to the great Atlantic Ocean, the calming marshes along the intercoastal waterway, a thriving historic center, and deep cultural heritage, Amelia Island is a slice of paradise. Yet with all the wonders Amelia Island provides, these natural and historic landscapes are disappearing. According to population growth trends, in 2070, an astonishing percentage of the island's canopy will be lost to development. In Nassau County, only 7% of the county's land has been preserved for conservation. The average Florida county is 29%. This puts Nassau County in the bottom 12 of 67 counties in the state. We must do more, and fast. As land becomes increasingly scarce, it will only continue to rise in value. The time to act is now. Thanks to the citizens' interest in pursuing conservation efforts on Amelia Island, North Florida Land Trust's existing partnerships with Amelia Tree Conservancy, the city of Fernandina Beach, and Nassau County burgeoned into Amelia Forever, a community-wide effort to protect the island's precious natural resources. In 2019, the Amelia Forever Committee was formed to launch a fundraising and marketing initiative to preserve lands in need of protection. The committee provides strategic direction on which properties to pursue and helps bring their conservation to fruition through garnered support. The goals of the Amelia Forever campaign are to preserve environmentally sensitive and historic land through a growing list of identified properties. They involve the Fernandina Beach, Nassau County, and Amelia Island community in the campaign effort. Provide education on the importance of preservation. Create awareness around the future voter referendum to fund conservation needs and show community support through advanced fundraising. The North Florida Land Trust was founded in 1999 by a group of private individuals who were really interested in preserving what we know and what we love about North Florida. So we're a private organization, a 501c3, so all our donations to us are tax deductible for income tax purposes. Our mission is to preserve the natural resources, the historic places and working lands of North Florida through a number of different vehicles, either through the acquisition of property, where we hold it in fee, as they call it, where we actually own it, or we'll acquire conservation easements. Those are easements where the landowner actually continues to own the land, but we hold an easement so that we've governed what's going to happen to it and it remains in conservation in perpetuity. We often work with communities, what we call facilitated transactions, um, wherein a community or state agency, they want to park, where they have some fundamental conservation issue, and we fill some gaps in terms of resources and knowledge to help that. And lastly, we also accept donations of land. There are a lot of people who either because they feel their land is special, want to make sure that it is a park forever, or oftentimes it's uh, businesses who are trying to meet certain environmental regulations or things like that, will give this their land and we will manage it in perpetuity for the betterment of the, of the public. Uh, when we look for properties to conserve, we're, we're out there looking for the public benefit. So it was a natural progression for us to come to Amelia Island, and we're very excited about what we can do here to preserve this beautiful place. My dad was a World War II vet, and he always told me anything worth having is worth fighting for. And I believe Amelia Island is worth fighting for, and that's why I agreed to chair this committee. Nature's never closed, and it's not canceled. 
which is a wonderful thing, but if we don't preserve it, it can go away. And we have so much development pressure on this island that we have got to fight to save the wild spaces. We've raised enough funds that we've purchased two parcels. One parcel is on North 11th Avenue and it preserved a freshwater marsh. It's also on a high bluff and has a tree canopy. It's kind of an oasis in the city. The other parcel that we preserved that I'm so excited about because it's adjacent to the Greenway, we preserved 3.3 acres off Citrona Avenue. And if you're not familiar with the Greenway, it's just a gem on this island. So we are expanding that. One thing that we did in purchasing these properties with the city of Fernandina Beach is we put ownership in their name. However, there's a clawback provision in the deed so that if there's any question of the land not being used for conservation, it reverts back to us permanently at the North Florida Land Trust. That way we ensure it is always preserved. There are so many special places left to save. We've identified over 450 parcels on the island that we would like to preserve. We need you to contribute now because honestly, we've never had more pressure for development on the island. One thing that's happened during COVID is that people have discovered that they can work remotely permanently. Also, people are fleeing cities due to violence and also they just want wide open spaces. We have that here, but we've got to save it. So please help us and contribute now. North Florida Land Trust and the Amelia Forever Committee have identified an endangered property on Amelia Island that we can save if we act now. The parcel comprises a maritime hammock forest that buffers and protects Egan's Creek Greenway to the west and the Atlantic Ocean to the east. Protection of this property will avoid pollution from septic tanks and runoff, save Amelia Island's treasured canopy, and protect wildlife such as wading birds, gopher tortoises, and bobcats. We have wanted to live here since, gee, 1975 or so. And uh, our businesses and our education and everything else was in Jacksonville when that became obvious that we we're gonna be changing that, we got a chance to move up here and we have. And we did it because of what you will see around us, the beauty of the island. So Amelia Island is the first place that we came to. We have a lot of friends on the island. The foliage, the wildlife, the ocean waters, the waterways just blew us away and we just feel like we found paradise. So we have an opportunity as residents of the entire island to step forward, find some money to invest in our island only. That's the neat thing that North Florida Land Trust did. They created a vehicle where we can give and decide where the money is being spent which is right here on Amelia Island. It will never be spent in Baker County or Volusia or any other county uh, in Florida. Now is a wonderful time to give because your donation can actually be doubled whatever you give. Thanks to some key lead donors, your donation will be matched up to a total of $100,000. All the money that you're going to support is gonna make your island home uh, preserved and conserved. You know, if you're really concerned about the uh, development, this is a great way to help conserve the island. And my husband Leon and I would love it if you would join us in contributing to this Amelia Island Forever campaign and help us conserve this beautiful, pristine paradise. So we encourage you to get involved with the uh, uh, Amelia Forever campaign. It, it's, a, it's a wonderful organization that's got a really dedicated mission. And we really need not only your participation and your support, but your financial support. So please give to the Amelia Forever campaign. I will say personally and from the North Florida Land Trust, we very much appreciate the people who give to the Amelia Forever campaign. The time is now for us to preserve the beautiful places on Amelia Island while we can. Please, please join Becky and I in making a contribution to this very, very important preservation of our island home. Please contact us to make your much needed donation to preserve Amelia forever. Thank you.
So hello everyone. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. I'm going to carry the presentation forward from here. Uh, just to introduce myself, you saw me in the video, but I am Mark Hudson. I am the Director of Strategic Conservation at North Florida Land Trust. And uh, it's been my pleasure up until this point in time to uh, be kind of a known face up there on the island in uh, working with property owners and working with the city and some other entities towards conserving some land on the island. And I'll talk a little bit more about how that works in a second. First off though, just to introduce you to who we are, again, Jim, I think said it on the video, but we are a private charity. We're not affiliated in any formal way with a government entity other than just the partnerships that we take on with them. And we have no responsibility except to our own board of directors. And much like Jim said, we are a charity. So we do survive on uh, charitable donations from the public at large. We were founded in 1999 here in Jacksonville. And our mission is to protect the natural resources, historic places and working lands of Florida. So we're not, most of our work when you see it is gonna be that natural places category. Uh, we do take a lot of pride in what we do that uh, both in preserving historic spots and oftentimes those things align with natural areas, as well as working farms in other parts of uh, the county or even in other parts of North Florida. We have preserved, uh, I think a little bit more now than 25,000 acres uh, in those 20 years and about 1,100 acres of that has been in Nassau County. Uh, but we don't just work in Nassau County, we do have a 13 county focus area, but you know, again, home for us is in Jacksonville, Nassau County is right next door. And I think there's quite a few of us who would say that we spent a lot of time going to Amelia Island, uh, recreating on the beaches, enjoying the restaurants, checking out the trees, just like all of you do. Uh, next slide, Jen. So a big question is, you know, that's who we are, but a big question we frequently get is how do we work, you know, and, and what are we doing? How do we ensure that land is preserved? And the answer is there's a few ways. The first one is, you know, we are an active land acquisition entity for our own purposes. So while on, on the island, we don't currently own any property, nor are we trying to, we have thousands of acres of land, which are owned outright by the North Florida Land Trust as potential as preserves. And uh, we take care of those preserves. Another thing that was mentioned in the video is a thing called conservation easements. Conservation easements are agreements that apply to a property, uh, that, which um, eliminate all or most of the development rights on that property. So the property is still owned by the private property owner, but they um, cannot develop it. And oftentimes there's protections against other activities that would harm the natural resources. We said these are permanent agreements. So even if the property owner sells the property in the future or you know, transfers it to their heirs, um, that agreement stays in place. So we know that that property is gonna be in conservation forever. Another thing that we do also mentioned in the video is facilitated transactions. And these are basically, there's a whole host of other entities out there in the world who care about conservation. Um, those city governments, state agencies, other conservation nonprofits, so on and so forth. And oftentimes uh, what lacks to be able to do their own conservation is just a little bit of expertise and know-how and sometimes, you know, money often is another one. And so we do partner with a lot of entities and the city of Fernandina Beach partnership is an example of that, that has been working now for several transactions where we've, you know, partnered up with a government entity and, and working with them towards realizing their own conservation goals. And uh, finally, you know, you can't just acquire land. You can acquire land, but if you're a bad manager of that land, you know, a lot of the good that you've done in preserving it is wiped out by the bad shape that the property ends up being in. So at least for the properties that we own and uh, definitely encourage our partners on the facilitated properties, we are active stewards and we have a land management staff that that's all they do is take care of North Florida Land Trust preserved properties. So that's how we preserve land in the immediate. Uh, Genevieve, could you change the slide? But you know, those things don't just happen on their own. It requires a lot of support. And so you'll notice that we do have folks on the support staff. A lot of what I do these days is what we call conservation planning. And uh, what that is, is you know, sometimes there's a lot of land and there's limited monetary resources to go buy that land. And so we have to ask ourselves the question of how do we know what we go out to preserve is the best thing that we could be preserving? 
And uh, we answer that question with conservation plan. Uh, obviously, you know, uh, we have to have money to be able to acquire these properties. And so that's where our development team, Genevieve, Megan, Allison, uh, really get in there and work on donor fundraising. And, you know, to be quite frank, uh, over all of our operating area, uh, public funds from state and federal entities and, and local municipalities are also a big source of funds. We do a lot of grant writing and a lot of government partnerships as well. We want the public to know why we think the natural resources that we seek to preserve are important and uh, give them a little window on what we do at the North Florida Land Trust. We do do education. Uh, there have been numerous events over the years on Big Talbot Island, not very far away uh, on our Bogey Creek Preserve, and we're hoping on more preserves that we own in the future, that there'll be public access opportunities for people to come and learn more about what we do. And so we always do encourage people to pay attention to our website, our Facebook, our Instagram for those educational opportunities as well. And finally, you know, uh, like I said, all this gets down to at the end of the day is that people need to know what we're doing and know that they have the opportunity to support important land conservation. So we also are marketers as well. We market ourselves, we market the natural resources that are available in North Florida, and we do try to make sure that the public's aware of the significance of conservation in North Florida. Uh, next slide, Jen. So that's what we do and how we do it. Uh, and then the more immediate question of how do we do it on Amelia Island? Um, because everywhere we work, there are different natural resources. There are different communities. There are different uh, funding sources. And so how does that all mix and match in the Amelia Island landscape? And I will tell you personally, I came to work for the North Florida Land Trust eight and a half years ago. And when I did that, you know, one of the first places I actually came to visit was Amelia Island. And even then, it was, it was pretty obvious that the island was close to being built out. And by built out, what we mean is, frankly, that all the undeveloped lots are pretty close to being developed. And once a place is built out, it's very hard at that point to create conservation natural resources. You talk about buying buildings and tearing them down and going through intense and very expensive restoration. So it was pretty obvious that the last opportunities to conserve land on Amelia Island were now. Um, but it's not an easy market for us. You know, to be honest, if we leave the Amelia Island environment and you look at the other acquisitions we do, probably 80% of the money that we get for those acquisitions is coming from some government source. But to be honest, government, those government sources of funding are not readily available in kind of urbanized environments like Amelia Island, where you have a lot of people. And a lot of them focused on big, what we call big, wild, and connected. A couple thousand acre properties we can purchase. And so... It was a very hard environment to work on our own. And we were really looking for a catalyst, a change agent. Uh, we did some other things. In the meanwhile, we did work with Amelia Tree Conservancy and helping them getting established, knowing that there'd be a local group that had eyes on the ground and could keep better track of the issues. Um, but eventually what really had to happen was, is finally, you know, we had a local partner, uh, uh, Commissioner Ross, Commissioner Krieger, uh, Dale Martin, those folks at the city of Fernandina Beach came and approached us and said, you know, we now see that the time is now for conservation and it's time that we take action. And, you know, we'd like to put some money where our mouth is and work with you. And so that was the catalyst change agent that we needed to get Amelia forever going. Next slide, please, Genevieve. So we do, we have an active partnership with the city of Fernandina Beach. Um, the way that works is we're doing really two things with the city. Uh, one is we are using our real estate expertise. We do a lot of negotiations for conservation property, and we're assisting that by on a pro bono basis. In other words, these are expenses that we are taking on ourselves um, to help the city manage the negotiations and acquisition process uh, for conservation lands within the um, city of Fernandina Beach. We also work with them on fundraising. Ideally, we're shooting for a 50-50 target um, on any individual property. That mixture may be a little different, but what we're trying to do is, is, is at least up to what we think is a reasonable fundraising limit, bring a, an equal match to the city. So we're really looking to the private individuals within the city and on the island in that partnership to really kind of step up and help the city match the funding that they are trying to put down for new conservation lands. Um, and so 
uh, other than just the acquisition and fundraising, the big question that I get from a lot of people is, okay, once it's preserved and it's owned by the city, what then? And the answer is, is we have taken steps and ensuring that at least with the money that we're bringing to the table on these acquisitions, that we have our own guarantees that that land is going to be preserved in perpetuity. And the way we do that is a deed restriction. And that deed restriction limits each of these properties to conservation and passive recreational use. Passive recreational use being defined as um, basically just very minimal recreational activities, trails, trailheads, interpretive signage, little benches, no ball fields, no playgrounds, that kind of stuff um, is really the most intensive use allowed. And if, you know, a future commission, like I said, we have a great relationship with the current city government, but if a future commission decided to try to violate those use agreements, yes, North Florida Land Trust would then have the legal right to claw that property back. In other words, people come in and say, you have broken the rules and this will be our nature preserve now. And so that's a pretty strong uh, tool, but the, you know, the good news is, is that the city welcomed it. Um, I think they saw the value in, in being credible and in letting the community know that these will be conservation lands going forward. Thanks. Next slide, Jen. So, you know, the next question is, that's the city of Fernandina Beach. What about the rest of the island? And, you know, the answer is, is we get back to that. It's still a hard environment. Um, but knowing that we can get some things done in the city, we really went out and hoped uh, that the remainder of the island would step up and help us achieve some conservation acquisitions on the remainder of the island. And that's really where the Amelia Forever campaign was born, was is that we knew that where rubber hit the road for the remainder of the island, we would have to bring private dollars to those properties. So, you know, at the end of the day, um, we're here talking to you guys about how we can fundraise for some really cool properties that I think would be a good addition to the portfolio of conservation lands and just something I think we'd all feel good knowing that grandkids could enjoy going forward. And the last thing about this is that the city partnership does fall under the fundraising umbrella of uh, Amelia Forever, but just know that every dollar raised for the Amelia Forever campaign can only be spent on Amelia Island. Next slide. So what makes a good project, right? Because um, we can't afford to pursue every potential property on the island. We have to be selective. And we also have to know that the properties which we can realistically acquire are the ones that you, the community, will financially support. So the biggest thing is it's got to be a natural or cultural resource on the island which tells a story about Amelia Island, about the natural resources. And that story could be a number of things. You know, it could be that there's a rare and endangered animal that lives on that um, particular property. And that's something that people care about. It could be that it's just a property that's woven into the history of the island that, you know, significant events happen there that we think that because those significant events happen in a natural area that future generations should be able to understand that context to know how that island grew, how this island grew up and, and how we got there. And so those are the kinds of storytelling opportunities that make for a good project. But also, you know, the, the community is invested in a number of natural resources that exist on the island as is. The Egan's Creek Greenway, Fort Clinch, Amelia Island State Park, the dune system, the marshes, the maritime hammock forest. These are all things that are already attracting the interest in the community. And to the extent that properties aligned with those you know, existing investments that the community has, that also potentially makes for a good project. Things that help preserve water quality. You know, A big focus in the city of Fernandina Beach is the concerns about different lots being able to be developed on septic tanks, and so which would harm the Egan's Creek water quality. And so sometimes what we're doing is about the natural resource, sometimes it's preventative. Um, species conversation, recreational opportunities, kayak launches, things like that historic value, all these things. And even, you know, is there just a general question of, you know, is there a part of town which has no park that people can walk to? And do we have a responsibility to ensure that they can? So these are all kinds of things that we look at. At the end of the day, when we talk to the Amelia Forever campaign um, committee, the question we ask ourselves is, can this be community supported? And that's really what makes a good project. Next slide. So 
um, let's talk about what we have done. So the first thing that we did and was really the nexus of the initiation of the community partnership with the city was the Epis what we call the Episcopal and Floyd tracks. These were about seven and a half acres located just north of the historic downtown um, that were up for sale and were the potential for development for several homes. They have a, what we call a mesic hammock forest and a small freshwater marsh, which is really interesting to me because those are really important to migratory birds and other things. Uh, it was identified with the city and we went out and negotiated the purchase and fundraised for half of it and got that one socked away at the end of the last year. And so we were pretty excited to get that inaugural acquisition done. Next slide, Jen. After that, there was the Dodd Tract. Um, this was a three acre property that sat right on the Egan's Creek Greenway. You know, again, this is about, one of the things we like about it, is it has a nice section of hammock forest on it. Um, but again, also, you know, it could have been turned into a home or two. And, you know, right there, that's a, along Citrina Road. Uh, at the time, anyways, you were allowed to build a home on septic. You didn't have to put it on sewer. And we were worried about what that would do to the water quality in Egan's Creek and everybody's enjoyment of the Greenway. So this was another one that was identified in partnership with the city and co-fundraised on a 50-50 basis and purchased and is now part of the city's holdings for conservation. Next slide. One that um, we're excited to say should be closing very soon as in the next couple of weeks is the JR Holdings property. Um, now this is a property kind of off uh, John Lafitte uh, and near, or Fletcher. And so this actually not only is an addition to the Eagans Creek Greenway, but what is not showing up on the map there is there's actually a uh, another conservation parcel that connects them in between. And we think potentially some other parcels nearby that we can do to add on to this. It is an actual maritime hammock forest. It is um, shaped by the salt spray that comes off the ocean. And this is a rare and globally declining habitat. So these maritime hammock forests are just critical to preserve. And we think, though, you know, really it's going to require the community's input as to whether or not this is a thing. Uh, it does create the opportunity for a trail access that goes from John Lafitte out towards the beach. And that is also another cool future potential uh, opportunity with this property. Next slide. And the last one before I uh, introduce my coworker and colleague here is one that we are hoping to bring to the city commission for another purchase here really soon and get under contract. And this is the Pheasants Run property. This is 5.3 acres. It's not directly on the Greenway, but it is on a small tributary that goes right into the Greenway. Uh, it's a music hammock for us, but I think, an, again, another big motivator there is this property is one that can be developed on septic tanks. Um, and, you know, those septic tanks, anywhere from 11 to 16, depending on how it would be developed, those septic tanks are potentially very harmful to the water quality of Egan's Creek. And so this one, you know, even though it's not on Egan's Creek, um, it's pretty critical and important that we can kind of lock up some of these properties that guarantee the water quality of Egan's Creek going forward. So um, that's the last of the slides that I have to present, I believe, Genevieve. That being said, um, I would like at this point to introduce my coworker, Rebecca Perry. She's the director of real estate. i have um, actually changing to help with these long use planning. How do we plan for conservation on Amelia Island and other places here going forward? And Rebecca is gonna be the known entity in terms of managing these real estate negotiations going forward. And so I leave it to Rebecca to tell us what's next. Awesome, hello everybody. Mark, thank you so much for that awesome breakdown of everything that's happened so far. This campaign has done some amazing work. Um, and I am really excited about this next opportunity that we have to protect a delicate habitat in the historic town of American Beach. Um, the property is called Little Nana Dune, and it is important for its conservation value, but also for its historic significance. So to tell us more about that um, is Pastor Carlton Jones. Um, he's the president of the Friends of American Beach, and he's just going to give us some more of that history and tell us why this place is so special. Pastor Jones.
Hello. There you are. We hear you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. My name is Carlton Jones. I'm president of Friends of American Beach. Uh, American Beach is on Amelia Island. It's really a special place. Um, what can I say? American Beach was uh, founded in 1935 by the Afro American Life Insurance Company and its president, Abraham Lincoln Lewis. He's a man, he was a man ahead of his time because they actually platted 200 acres that they acquired into um, a vacation resort. At that time, as you know, uh, <clears throat> there was a, it was a time during segregation, but he uh, designed it in such a way that he preserved a lot of the land in his early plans uh, on the north side of the um, beach area. Uh, we have a beautiful tree canopy. And then on the south side, we have the dune system, which is uh, the uh, Nana dune. And part of the unique history is it's always been a special place, not only for just its natural resources that um, every year birds and animals migrate here, but we also have a, a lot of natural resources and plants and herbs that are not found in any other part of this island. And there are schools that are interna international schools that come um, annually uh, to, you know, just study what's, what's here and study the history. We also have a American Beach Museum, which is very unique and it's uh, located in the community center um, at American Beach. The most important thing that I think and the threat right now is development. It's, it's got a lot of natural resources. And so we're, we as a community are trying to find ways to preserve uh, what can be preserved and um, not to uh, disrupt development, but have responsible development. And part of the fight was um, Marvine Betch, which is affectionately known as the beach lady. She really started something that just sort of caught on and, and actually made American Beach, not only the destination that I spoke about, but just sort of created a spirit that's just unique in almost any community. And that is, uh, you know, connecting to nature. And she fought very hard to um, get the National Park Ser Service to accept the Nana Dune, which um, is the largest dune, in, uh, dune system in the state of Florida. Well, Little Nana was part of Nana, the dune, but unfortunately the Park Service only surveyed what is currently there. And so it, it takes an act of Congress literally to resurvey it and, and to bring it back into the uh, Nana Dune system. Well, Little Nana is located on the south end at Bernie Road and Ocean. Now that dune has grown. It's an active dune that has grown to 46, over 46 feet in height. And so it's also had, has a tree canopy on the backside of Ocean. And this is an opportunity to uh, preserve uh, something that does have living habitat and also uh, plants that are in the uh, foliage and the canopy that are unique. Uh, the other thing that I'd like to share is uh, Dr. Janetta Cole, who is uh, also the uh, sister of uh, Marvin and affectionately known as the Beach Lady. She too is building here at American Beach. And she too has, has supported her sister in the fight to preserve this special place uh, called American Beach. Uh, she too is um, on the uh, American Beach uh, Museum board and has uh, a national, uh, is known nationally. She just recently retired from the Smith, one of the Smithsonian uh, museums and uh, she's making American Beach her home. 
along with her husband, J.D. Staten. So with that being said, I think that there's an opportunity to collaborate with the Park Service, the county, which they've already had some discussions, and the North Florida uh, Public, uh, the North Florida Land Trust. And for the blessings of what Amelia Forever brings. Uh, this is a special place and I think it's worthy of an investment. I could talk on and on about some of the other uh, notables here like Evans Rendezvous, uh, which was a, a, a beach, res a, a place that was a restaurant and a, a sort of a night spot that brought in the names of Duke Ellington, James Bryan, uh, James Brown, just a host of musicians that sort of traveled what they used to call the chicken circuit, which came from Har uh, Chicago, Harlem, down through the South, and ended up at this special place called American Beach. And many times they come and they play for free. And so we are trying to preserve that uh, building to capture that history. And uh, we have received grants uh, uh, with the county, as well as we've also raised money for that. But right now, today's discussion is saving Little Nana Dune, which uh, we would like to see uh, continue to grow and to be part of Nana. And that concludes uh, my discussion. Rebecca, thank you. Thank you so much, Pastor Jones. So. As you heard, this little Nana Dune is, it's truly a precious place. Um, but as so many areas on the island, it's, it's threatened by development potential. So the dune is, consists of six lots and four of those lots are currently listed for sale on the open market for about $1.7 million. Uh, three of the lots already have house lot packages created um, so what this means is that there's an urgent need to raise the funds to keep these lots from being sold for homes. Uh, we are hoping to acquire three of the lots by May of next year. We're currently negotiating with the landowners. Uh, that amount is roughly $1.3 million. And as you can see, I hope you feel the excitement about this project and why it's so important to us. And we really hope that you'll join us in saving Little Nana Dune. And next up is Megan, our Director of Development and Marketing with the North Florida Land Trust. Thanks, Rebecca. And thank you, Pastor Carlton, for um, reviewing the importance of the American Beach Project. Uh, it's, it's a very both meaningful and um, exciting sort of uh, combination of both conservation and historic and cultural value, which is really um, really exciting to us at the North Florida Land Trust to be able to um, participate in a project of that importance. So thanks for reviewing that and thank you um, all of you on this call. I know many of you have already uh, joined the Amelia Forever campaign and, and become a lead donor. Uh, we consider everyone that has um, made a gift to date to be just that, a lead donor to this campaign. Um, investing um, first in what uh, we see as uh, such beautiful and endangered treasures on the island. So I um, wanted to say that we're at the North Florida Land Trust, you know, we have the, the opportunity to work with a lot of different communities within our large region. Um, and we as a staff consistently say time and again how um, inspired we are by this particular community's both enthusiasm and commitment to conservation. It's really unmatched. And I think it's something that um, really has helped us um, move quickly and with a lot of um, gumption and what our upcoming uh, goals will be because we are so encouraged by what we've seen so far in terms of uh, fundraising support. Next slide, please. We have many, many donors already, and I am just so looking forward to seeing this list continue to grow. We, um, as you know, have, uh, we've launched and really in earnest sought support for this campaign during a really unprecedented time. 
And so looking forward to seeing how that could, um, as, as things kind of level out for all of us, how this will continue to grow. Next slide, please. As a, next slide, please. Might have a delay here, thank you. Um, so as a, a, oh, sorry, one before. <laughs> um, so as a kind of recap of where we are from a fundraising standpoint, we've raised just about um, $623,000, as Pam had mentioned. Um, our total need for all of the projects that we've talked about today is 1.87 million. So what is included in that 1.87 million are projects that we've already closed on, like Episcopal and Floyd and the Dodd Tract, a project that we will close on hopefully before the end of this year, which is that JR Holdings piece, and then um, including the American Beach Little Nana Dune system. So with all of that combined, it's 1.87 million. We've raised 623,000 and we've committed um, to the properties that Mark mentioned and spent $516,000. So that brings us to a, a fundraising gap and a need of 1.25 million that we hope to raise between now and May of next year. And with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Pam. Back to Pam, our um, fearless leader for the Amelia Forever campaign, who can talk to you about how you can help us reach that goal. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, great. Um, one thing I would like to tell you, actually it was referenced in the video that we had a $100,000 match. Actually, we've had enough donations that that's declined some. We have a roughly 52,000 left that will create a match so that if you donate now, you know, it's, it's your donation is doubled. So I would like to encourage you to please donate to the Amelia Forever campaign. And the way you do that is go on North Florida Land Trust website, that's nflt.org. Go on there and go under Amelia Forever and make your donation. And that makes sure that your dollars go to buy land on this island. And as Mark mentioned, you know, in addition to even the ones that we talked about today, we've identified over 400 other parcels we'd like to preserve. And we would really like the community support. Additionally, you may want to contribute or participate some other way. So please reach out to us. We'd love to have you. Thank you very much. And we're gonna have q and I've seen several of you posting questions already. So we're gonna let Genevieve lead that. Genevieve. Thank you, Pam. All right, let's see. And if I can get, I'm going to unmute all of the presenters so that you can uh, join us to answer questions. Let's see, Mark. Megan, can you unmute Mark? Sure, yeah, absolutely. Okay, so I saw some questions come up earlier, so I'll start with those. What contingencies are in place or needed for community support to expand existing historical cultural preservation of the island resources? For example, Nana Dunes, American Beach. I think the answer is, and uh, we have just started discussing this, but uh, we, I just a couple weeks ago started talking with the city and, but this would be something that we would hope to apply to the whole island to doing what we would call a strategic conservation plan for the island. That kind of plan allows us to look at a bunch of different things, natural resources, water resources, so on and so forth. But one of the things that we would do an in-depth analysis and try to do some community input is uh, historic and cultural resources to ensure that we're really kind of looking at that um, in a comprehensive way when we approach uh, our potential acquisitions. Thank you, Mark. Do the potential effects of recognized global climate change on the local environment 
in particular sea level rise on Amelia Island, affect your analysis of which available properties for conservation should have priority? So Another the one answer, for you, Mark. <laughs> yep. So the answer to that is um, we did do kind of an initial, uh, uh, what I would call a preliminary strategic conservation plan for the city of Fernandina Beach, so not the whole island. In that case, we did look at storm surge data, sea level rise data, and different forms of flood mapping to try to make sure that we had a better, a good understanding of how conservation lands can help also be mitigation for those impacts. Um, that is something that I would expect that we would review as well and potentially even add another couple facets to it when we do a comprehensive plan for the island. Thanks, Mark. Johnetta Betch Cole asks, can one designate to a specific project such as to preserving Little Nana? Megan? So uh, yeah, I'll take that. Um, so the answer is uh, yes, the Amelia Forever campaign, if we um, uh, accept any donations, as you know, they'll be used on all of our um, current slash future projects. In this case with um, uh, little Nana being our next project. So um, a gift to the Amelia Forever campaign is a gift to that project. Um, you are welcome to uh, further clarify that you only want it spent on that project. And in any case, if there's ever a point in which we're fundraising for a property and for some reason the, the acquisition of that property falls through and you've dedicated it directly to that one property, then at that point we would um, contact you and um, give you the option to either designate your gift to another project that we're pursuing as part of the campaign or we can return it. Thank you. And that kind of rolls into another question. How does NFLT prioritize which property is purchased first? So the answer is, is that we are just on a very practical, to be entirely frank. I mean, when the Amelia Forever Committee meets, it, there's a list of potential projects that is presented. These are ones that we are working on or are new. And there's a ranking process that happens. And frankly, the, what we look at is we as the staff review what the natural resources are, the significance in each case in terms of impact of the environment, cultural histo and historic preservation. And then really, because for these projects, we have to be able to find private donor dollars. Unfortunately, the ones um, that are the most attractive in fundraising context are the ones that win. Uh, that being said, that's why community support and understanding of community support and really this public input-based plan that we do next year is gonna be so important. It helps us um, really define what is, uh, is most important to the community and therefore most likely to be financially supported. But we do have to be practical that the ones that we can get done are the ones that we can bring money to. And those are the ones that are first in line. Thank you, Mark. Let's see, next question. Is Amelia Forever aware of the developer-led efforts to extend the currently closed Orange Avenue Stub Road from First Coast Highway to connect Sable Palm Road. Um, opening access to the potential development of 13.3 acre currently landlocked parcel. Is anybody familiar with that? No. Okay. I thought. Might have to come back to that one. I would say, Alan, feel free to email us uh, either Rebecca Perry at rperry at nflt.org or myself at mhudson at nflt.org with whatever information you have about it. Yep. And if, if one of you can put that in the chat, that might be helpful. And yes, Mike, we will be sending a copy of the video in Zoom so you can share it. Thank you. We'll do that as soon as we get the cloud recording after this event. Um, Oh, okay. Please do not forget Ari's question. To whether or not, let's see, to donate to the, oh, the Fernandina Beach Fund. There's some confusion about having the two funds between the city's fund and the Amelia Forever Fund. Um, 
Do you think one of you can take that? Maybe Megan? Sure, yeah. And Mark, feel free also to jump in as needed. Um, but so as, yes, you are right. Those are two separate funds. The um, City of Fernandina Beach's conservation fund that had the um, private uh, match as well is, um, is just that. It's the City of Fernandina Beaches and would only be contributing to City of Fernandina Beach properties. Um, that fund is, um, it's possible that some of those dollars would go to some of the same projects that we've partnered with the city on, but we cannot guarantee that as there might be other projects that the city would pursue um, outside of our Amelia Forever campaign. So um, any gifts to that fund would be for city only projects. Gifts to the Amelia Forever campaign fund um, would be, um, would be spent on any uh, current or future city partnership uh, properties that we are working on, but it would also be utilized um, on other aspects of the island outside of the city of Fernandina Beach city limits. So um, Little Nana Dunes being the large um, example right now um, and our you know largest kind of fundraising project. Um, gifts coming in would be spent there um, versus on a, a city of Fernandina Beach um, uh, property. Does that clarify? Because there was two people that had that question. Well, I might add to it, Megan, just Absolutely. so people are aware. Um, in the case of the city of Fernandina Beach match fund, uh, there was a private donor who was wanting to incentivize more private giving towards the city's efforts. Uh, which is good, um, but they're an anonymous donor, so we don't know who they are. And uh, we did try to reach out to their attorney, but uh, unfortunately we weren't able to coordinate things, so we are sorry for the confusion. Um, but yes, and I think there was another question that that match uh, offer with the city fund, I think does expire soon in terms of being able to capitalize on all that match funding. Um, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, the very similar goals they're trying to go to. I think the other thing to understand is that city fund that the money is going to is actually initially established for cities operating funds to go into that. So this is uh, kind of an addition to those funds. Um, but otherwise, Megan's clarifications are the correct ones. But yeah, we've gotten a lot of questions about confusion about that. We tried to figure some cohesive message out, but we, like I said, haven't been able to get a hold of the donor. Thank you both. Uh, Vernal asks, does the fact that the ocean dunes on American Beach are being destroyed by vehicles, particularly large trucks, affect your conservation plans for this community? The destruction of those dunes will lead to the destruction of American Beach. Thank you. Uh, I'm, I'm going to take this and also wrap in another question, if you don't mind, Jen, that I saw that happened sure. earlier on about percentage of the island that is going to be preserved because it, it, this kind of neatly ties into both ones. Well, um, both to the person who asked, you know, is there kind of a magic percentage of the island that needs to be preserved or, you know, even getting towards the dune ecosystem and how to assess that for conservation. When we do these kinds of things, these percentages are good benchmarks to understand, but what we really do is look at a thing that we call the green infrastructure. And the green infrastructure are the natural and environmental resources on the island that must be maintained for the island to be a healthy place. So there's not necessarily a magic number, there's just a magic number of resources. So, you know, we are limited at the North Florida Land Trust in that we are, our primary tool is acquiring land. And a lot of the issues on the beach, by way of example, that's public land. So, you know, that's, that's really kind of a discussion between the community and the public land owner, which is, you know, the city or the government or the county or the state of Florida in most cases. Um, but that being said, to the extent that we can acquire private dune lots that help with the reinforcement of the green infrastructure of, you know, all the resources that the dune provides us in terms of storm surge protection, wave energy, habitat, and frankly, I think it's an important aesthetic part of the island as well. Uh, that will be assessed as part of kind of a green infrastructure planning. And so that will be looked at equally to the significance of buying land along Egan's Creek to maintain the water quality um, and, you know, what we have to do to preserve other natural resources. So not a magic percent, not 
a single issue like Dune or, or the Creek by itself. We want to look at a comprehensive view of the infrastructure, the green infrastructure on the island, and then try to address that uh, in the places where it's the most important. Thank you. And also too, our, you know, once we do acquire land, it's the responsibility of North Florida Land Trust, particularly our stewardship department to make sure that that land is protected. And sometimes that might mean, you know, um, neighborhood watch, having good relationships with the neighbors of a certain property, um, sometimes getting law enforcement involved if there's trespass, that kind of thing. So um, as Mark mentioned earlier in his presentation, um, once we own land, we are responsible for keeping that land intact for the public benefit. And so that can mean a lot of different things. Okay, next question. Uh, does NFLT work with or get any tech or financial assistance from the Nature Conservancy? And have we investigated that? I can take this one. Okay. Genevieve. Um, yeah, so uh, the Nature Conservancy, as you all probably know, is a global nonprofit organization. I worked there for 15 years prior to coming to the land trust. Um, what I'll say about that is that we are a regional land trust. So we have the ability to focus on small areas like this that really matter to the community. Um, and we absolutely will partner with other nonprofits um, if they want to participate in the campaign. Um, we have, the Nature Conservancy has actually reached out to us asking about Amelia Island. Um, and basically uh, we let them know that we have this campaign running and um, you know, my colleagues over at the Nature Conservancy were happy that we were working in this area. Uh, there's other land trusts that we've also reached out to. So we absolutely would work with anyone that wanted to participate. Thanks, Rebecca. Um, Betsy's asking if the city match expires this month. I think that was kind of regarding what we were discussing earlier. Are you, is that true, Mark? nodding your head yes uh my my information may be out of date but it had been set to expire earlier in the year and i believe it was extended into november but uh so i'm not sure if another right. extension is planned if they don't meet the deadline but um i would expect not you know one extension is is a lot to ask for usually okay uh nassau county planning is hosting a meeting at bernie park at one o'clock this saturday regarding the Sable Palm Road issue. So we can uh, follow back up on that. Mark says 100% of all undeveloped parcels need preserving. <laughs> we agree. Okay, let's see. Janetta Betch Cole. Oh, wow. Janetta Betch Cole and JD Staten will make a contribution of $5,000 to preserve little Nana. We are so happy that our gift will be matched. We encourage others to join us today in helping to save priceless little Nana. Thank you so much, Thank Janetta. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And we'll go ahead and put the, put the link back in the, in the chat. So if you guys do want to donate today, you can. There you go. Oh, Thank you, Brenda. We have another donor, Brenda Jackson. Thank you, Brenda. Um, to donate to Little Nana. Thank you, Brenda. Thank you. Is it feasible for the trust Amelia Forever to guarantee a loan while rates are so low to facilitate purchases, especially immediate ones like Little Nana, so the land that the land can be saved before it might go to a private buyer? Yeah, I can take this one as well. Um, yes. There is an ability for the land trust to take out a loan, uh, but just as if you were taking out a loan, you look at that very, very carefully in terms of interest and your ability to repay it. Um, there are very specific loan programs for conservation properties. Um, so we are always looking at potential options um, and we, we definitely keep that in mind. We have not initiated that for this particular tract, but it certainly is a tool in the toolbox. And I'm, I might add to an important thing like any loan is that when we apply for that loan, we have to show that we can pay it. And one of the things that uh, is very helpful in that sense is, you know, a lot of donors, there's this May deadline and they feel like they can't give that much. Well, with a loan, being able to do what we call a multi-year pledge, which is you pledge money 
for multiple years going forward, you may not be able to give us a lot of money in any one year, but if you can do that over time, we can then show the lender that we have the ability to repay with those loans over time. So contributions over time are also a big deal because they help us with exactly those kinds of acquisition strategies. Thanks, Mark. And I'm, I'll just tack on to that. I'm going to put my personal email in the, in the chat. Um, it's also on the Amelia Forever webpage if you ever need to reference it. But if anyone wants to reach out to us about making a multi-year pledge um, to kind of extend your um, commitment and have a, a, an even larger impact like Mark is suggesting, um, just reach out to us directly and we'll get that all um, worked out with you. We would so appreciate that. Um, and so I'll put my email in here, but also wanted to shout out to Mark Tomes. Mark, thank you so much for being willing to donate um, also to the preservation of Little Nana, so thank you. Do we have any other questions for the panel? Do any of the presenters today want to add anything? I would just yep. say if any questions come up, everyone is more than welcome to email us, um, either to some of us that have shared our emails directly or to our general info account, which we check daily. Um, and we're more than happy to answer any questions that, that come up for you after you've kind of digested everything we've shared today. Uh, Ari asks, do you have a way to set up monthly contribution auto pays for those who can't afford lump sum contribution? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for asking that. So we do, if you go to the donation page, when you go to nflt.org slash Amelia Forever, you'll see kind of that donate button right there. Um, click on that. And there's a, a really simple way in the form to make it a monthly contribution. Thank you, Mark. So glad you enjoyed it. Any other questions before we close this meeting out? Thank you, Cassie. Glad you could join us. Okay. We're also, um, one last note, I just um, wanna say that if, if there's anyone that you feel um, would benefit from hearing about um, Amelia Forever that wasn't able to join us today, we please encourage you to, to share out the recording once you receive this. Um, Help us spread the word because um, that's, you know, word of mouth is really, I think, how we're going to get this done. And that goes for any foundations or businesses that you might be associated with or know someone at that you think might also be interested in getting behind the campaign. So we appreciate your help and, and, and helping us spread the word and finding more people that would uh, be inspired to donate. Yes. And if you're interested on, uh, in getting involved on a deeper level, you can also contact us and we welcome you on the Amelia Forever Committee as well. So just let us know. Let's save Nana Dune. I agree. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> this has been such great energy. Thank you guys so much. I just close by thanking our presenters today for all their hard work, not only today and leading up to this event, but for all they have dedicated to Amelia Forever and protecting this precious resource in North Florida. Thank you to the Amelia Forever Committee, all the incredible donors and volunteers, and all of you today on this call who show an interest in preserving Amelia Island and the natural and historic integrity it offers our region, nation, and world. Have a wonderful day and we will be in touch. Take care. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>